Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the Game Engine Concepts series that I'm doing. So this one isn't necessarily a game engine concept, but it is about a framework that we use so often in game engines. Well, when you're doing independent game engines, which is OpenGL. And specifically, this is about debugging in OpenGL because it's so hard and I don't really feel like there's a lot of good resources on just how to do it. So in this episode, I'm going to go over two bugs that I think are some of the most common bugs that you'll run into when you're running these projects and that I've personally run into several times. And the first time that I ran into these bugs, it took me hours to figure out what was going wrong. And so hopefully this will help you guys out if you run into something similar. Now, have you ever tried to run an OpenGL program and you run it, you're waiting for it to compile and it goes through, but then all of a sudden you're left with this. This happens in C++ and Java. So of course I'm doing this in Java and IntelliJ, but you run into this in C++ too. How do you even go about trying to solve this? If you have a very large code base, which I don't in this example, but if you do, it's super difficult just to figure out where this could be going wrong because it could literally be going around anywhere in your code base and you don't really know. So what I like to do whenever I run into a bug that looks like this in particular is I'll go into my main function and uh, just go into the entry point and we'll place a breakpoint right here, which you can do in IntelliJ just by uh, clicking right to the right of the line number. And so this breakpoint will basically just make the editor stop when we run this in debug mode. So then I'll go up to here and I'm going to hit debug main, which is also shift F9 if you want to do that. So this will open up my debug console, which will just stop the program here. And we'll wait for this to start. And then once it starts up, uh, you'll notice it says that we're in the main function right now. It shows the current line of code executing. This is much like Visual Studios. We can press F9 to resume the program. This uh, reruns the entire program. Then we can stop it. And up here, we can step into a function by pressing F7. We can step over by pressing F8. And we can step out by hitting Alt Shift or no, no, step out by pressing shift F8. So uh, we're going to be pressing F7 a lot. So I'm going to hit F7, go into window, and then I'm going to hit F7 again, hit it again. And then I'm just going to hit F8 and hit F8 a few times just to get through these. Okay. So then we're going to go into here, hit F7 once more. Uh, let's hit F8, see if it fails. Okay. So that went fine. Let's hit F8 again. Uh, of course, it's going to fail inside the loop, right? i that's just logical because this is our game loop. So of course it's going to fail somewhere in here. I'll go ahead and put a new breakpoint inside here because this is what I usually do. Then I'll hit shift F9 to enter into debug mode again. And yeah, this is a slow process, but let me tell you, it's the best way to do this when you have this type of problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit continue since we put another breakpoint. That'll take us to the next breakpoint. So now we can just continue on with our debugging. I'll hit F8. I'm going to hit uh, F7 to get inside of here, and then we'll just skip through this stuff. Now we are inside of our game loop. Let's see if we go through here. Seems to be working fine. Uh, GLFW pull vents went fine. Clear colors working. All that stuff is working. Let's go into our scene update method. So I'm just going to skip through these. It seems to be working good. Update seems to be working fine. Okay, and then render, and if you have like a lot of game objects too, you could just insert another breakpoint at runtime, then hit continue just to jump out of loops because that happens often too. Okay, so now I'm going to hit F8 over the render and we get our crash. Okay, so this narrows things down significantly. This is a rendering issue, which we would expect since these types of non-zero exit statuses usually come when we're interfacing the C code inside of our Java. So let's hit a breakpoint here. Let's enter in one more time to our debug mode and then go inside and see if we can narrow this down further. And of course, I already know where this bug is because I put it there intentionally <laughs> to illustrate what to do when this happens. But let's go into here. We'll hit F7. Now we're going to go into our batch render. And of course, it's going to have to happen inside of here because this is the only thing happening. So I'm going to hit F7. Okay, so we bind the buffer. That's fine. We buffer the subdata. That's fine. We say shader use. That's fine. Upload mat 4, that works, that works. Uh, we activate the textures, that worked fine. We uploaded the int array, that was fine too. Bind vertex array, enable vertex attribute array 0. 1, 2, 3, that all worked fine. Draw elements. Ah, uh, this is the worst because when it fails here, what that tells you is that basically 
yeah, it's something's going wrong, but um, you don't really know what's going wrong. And it could have happened in any of these steps. And so I'm going to go through a few more things we can do just to ensure that we have everything correctly. There is a tool that you can use that helps you go a little bit deeper. Um, it's OpenGL debugging specifically, but it only works on exes. So Java does not compile to an exe, so you can't really use it with Java. I haven't found a good uh, OpenGL debugger for Java, but basically what it does is it shows you all of the OpenGL commands and then it shows you where specifically the GL command failed. So this doesn't show us all the commands that are happening when we run GL draw elements. And so something else could have failed within here, which would give us a little bit more information. So I'll show you how to do it this way since we don't have that at our disposal right now. So we know it failed here. Let's hit another breakpoint inside of here, hit shift F9, and let's check out our data and just make sure that all of our data is correct. Cause that's one way you could fail, right? Is if you had some bad data and OpenGL tried to access data that wasn't available. And then all of a sudden you get that crash. Okay. So we go up here and then we have all of our variables that are local right now. So what we can do is we can say, okay, the shader is not null. So that's fine. We would expect that since all the shader stuff worked too. Uh, it says our VAO ID is one, which means that we did get a VAO ID generated. So that's good. Let's check out our textures. We have one texture and it looks like it's not null too. So that's good. Texture slots, that's just a local variable, which doesn't really help us much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus button and add in some of our data up here. Because if we go to the top of this, uh, this is a batched render. And I actually have a list of textures. I have the VAO, VBO ID, um, max batch size, all this stuff. And then uh, right here, I have the vertices data. And it doesn't show you the vertices data immediately in here. But if we type in vertices right here, and then it, you'll see it'll give you the array. And then we can check this out, okay? And so you can check this out according to what data you're expecting. Now, of course, I'm expecting some very specific data. I have a quad that's 1920 by 1080. And then this is RGB data. That looks all good, right? And then this is texture coordinates. And then this is the next vertex. So we got 0, 19, 20. And then we have, once again, RGBA data. So basically what you want to do is just make sure that you have enough data here. And so it looks like we do have enough data. And then let's check right down here and make sure we're not doing an array uh, out of index on the GPU, right? And the way we can do that is just by checking to make sure. So we are drawing this dot num sprites times six. So this is how much we're asking for inside of this array on the GPU. So if we do uh, this dot num sprites times six, that tells us that's 18. And we want 18 triangles, which means that we would want 18 times three, uh, which is 54. Clearly, our array has 3,600 floats, 36,000 floats. So clearly, it's not a buffer overrun or something, an array out of bounds uh, error because we have enough room there. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, what else could it be? The data looks fine. This looks fine. And then this is where you just go through and you say, okay, let's stop debugging real quick. Let's analyze every single piece of code. And so I usually go to the most important starts, which are where you're generating all your data. So VAOID, this looks good. We're binding the vertex array. That's fine. We generate a VBO. We bind it. We buffer an empty array. That's fine. That looks fine. An EBO, we generate it. Uh, we call this function generate indices, which we can jump into it. And it's basically just looping through and adding stuff to an array. And then it's returning that array up here uh, where we go. And then we just bind it and then we buffer it. That's fine too. Okay, now we're going to enable the buffer attribute pointers. Okay, so we uh, vertex. If we hover over this, then it should tell us, okay, so this is size two. It's a type float. Size is 36 in bytes. And the offset is zero. Okay, that looks good for attribute zero. For attribute one, we've got size four. So that means it's going to be two floats followed by four floats. And we have 36 in one vertex. This says the float bytes offset is eight, which sounds right too, because two times four, there's two floats here and each one is four bytes big. So this does sound correct, eight. Okay, and then we have attribute two, text cord size is two. Vertex size is 36. We would expect this to be four times eight, 32 plus eight is 40. No, 24. I don't know where I got 40 from. Okay, and then I think you can see the problem at this point. We have two here again. This should be three. And then when we run this, 
we get no error and it runs. Now, in reality, it is not going to be this simple for you. I've had it at times where I had this one change to three and this one change to two. And then when that happens, you get an okay thing, but this will lead to some errors, especially say you forget to enable it down here. So if we take out this one, then we end up getting this weirdness, <laughs> okay? And so you're like, what the heck is happening here? And I honestly can't tell you what happens, why it does that. I'm guessing it's because it's skipping certain portions of our data, but every single line matters. And you make a simple mistake, it's going to go very bad. So you have to make sure you comb through this stuff very, very carefully. Like I have spent hours looking through the code only to realize that I did have a mistake somewhere where it was something like this was two instead of three. So that's one debugging tip. Now, you're not always going to run into this type of problem, though. Sometimes you run into another type of problem, which I've actually got over here. Let's run this. Okay, yeah. So this is something else I've seen quite often, and it's always annoying, but you can look at this and immediately say one thing, all right? So when I look at this, I can immediately say, oh, this is a CPU error. This is not a GPU error. Why? Because the, it looks wrong, right? And so that means that the data is not formatted correctly, and that's why it looks wrong. So this gives me a very clear place to start where I would start my batch render, and then I would just go into where we're about to render. So I would go up here, and then I would just hit Shift F9, and we'll hit this breakpoint, and then we can start looking at the data and making sure it all looks correct. So we go in, we hit the breakpoint. Let's go up here. I'm gonna. We can look at this data first, okay? <laughs> so we'll look at this. So this gives us all of these uh, extra data, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. The shader, okay? Shader looks fine. It's got the vertex source, the fragment source, and it is being used. We've got a VAO ID that looks good. We've got textures, that looks good. One texture being used and then all of our text slots, that all looks fine. Let's go into this now. And let's go into the vertices. This is where I would really start because automatically that looks like a vertex error with, uh, from what I saw. So first thing I would do is start comparing this to what we've got up here, our vertex attribute pointers. And so you see it's the same as before. We have a position, color, texture coordinate, ID. So this is two, four, this is two, this is one. So we should see 1920 by 1080. That's our vertex position for the top left or something. <laughs> and then we have RGBA. That looks right. We have vertex text. Okay, so this is the top right vertex because this is one, one. And then we have the uh, texture ID, which is zero. Okay. And then we have the next one, 1920, And then we have RGBA, texture coordinate, texture ID. This all looks right. Nothing looks wrong with this. So what I would say is, okay, my vertex data looks fine. It's got to be something else. So then I would go to the texture slots. Okay, that's fine. That should just be in ordered array anyways. Textures, we got texture zero. File path looks right. Okay, that all looks right. And I wouldn't even guess that this was a texture error because we could see that the textures were loading properly, but it's actually just something else, okay? And so that's almost it. But there's one other thing that we did not check. And that is our index data. Because if we go down to our render method, we are drawing elements. We're not just drawing. What that means is that we also have an element buffer, but we're not storing that element buffer. So next place I would go is here. Uh, element buffer and your vertex buffer. Those are two things I always check for uh, malformed data because 90% of the time you got some sort of data that's going wrong there. I'm going to exit out of this. We'll restart our debug. All right, so now we hit this breakpoint. Let's just hit F8 jump over that and now we should see indices over here. Okay, and sure enough, we see indices right here. Now this says three, two, two, zero, two, one. Automatically this throws a red flag to me because if we go and look, well, we know that this should be two sets of indices for triangles, right? So this would be the first triangle, the first three, and this would be the second triangle because I'm not using a triangle fan or strip or anything or any of those other fancy methods, I'm just using triangles. And we have a duplicate here. This goes three, two, two, which tells me something's wrong here because this should have three individual <laughs> IDs. And so then I would go down here. I haven't actually run into this problem that many times. It's usually a different subset of a problem like this. 
And you'll notice that we have an error here. This should be, oh, and I even have it labeled. See, it should be 320021, then 764465. We got 322021. And I wrote this while I was writing this code to remind myself of this in case an error like this ever happened. So let's change that to zero. We will stop, we'll save, and let's run it and see what happens. And sure enough, it gets fixed. Now, like I said, normally I don't run into like this type of error. Normally what I run into is like an index mismatch. So these are three unique ones, but it'll end up throwing everything off because that three, two, one, you see, you get this weird triangle. <laughs> And so when that happens, usually what I'll do is I'll just start messing around with things. I'll be like, okay, maybe this should be uh, two. Maybe this should be two. Maybe this should be one. And then I'll try that. This is not the proper way to go about this too. Uh, I got the same thing. Let's try something else. Uh, what you should do is just think very critically about this. And you should say, okay, so if I have a quad with four corners, so we got four corners here, and this is index zero, one, two, three, what we want to happen is three, we want to go in a clockwise direction. So zero, one, two, three. So then what we would do is we would do three, two, zero for counterclockwise, and then zero, two, one. And so just this little diagram right here tells you, oh, okay, I this is the correct order because we know that it needs to be counterclockwise. I believe I might have my indices stored in a different manner. But that's just another method. Uh, the one thing that I really, really want you guys to take away from this is the debugger. The debugger built into IntelliJ or Visual Studio if you're using that, which also has an amazing debugger. This is your best friend. You can examine variables at runtime, see what they are. It even says it up here too. If you're looking at your source code, it'll tell you, hey, this EBO ID, it's two. Um, if you look up here, it doesn't have these because they're not uh, local variables, but it would if they were local to the scope, but then you can also go down to here and then you can check out all of your variables that are local to the scope, which is nice. You can type things in up here and run uh, small expressions, which is nice because sometimes you need to do that to make sure everything's working properly. So use this debugger. Uh, remember these buttons, step over, step into, or step over, step into, step out, because those are the ones that you'll most commonly need. And then remember continue or resume program and you can just place a new breakpoint if you're like, okay, so I know the problem's not up there, but it could be down here. Then you'll place a breakpoint down here. We'll hit continue. Then we hit this breakpoint. Or uh, sometimes what I'll happen is I'll get stuck in a loop. And I'm like, okay, I want to just get out of the loop. So what I'll do is I'll hit a breakpoint right outside of it, hit continue. Now I'm outside of it. And then you can just click the breakpoints to get rid of them. I do want to mention though, um, we just hit 500 subscribers. First of all, thank you. That's awesome. I am super happy. Let's go for a thousand. That'd be cool too. Uh, and then second of all, I have gotten several requests to start a Discord server, but I'm not sure if I want to start it yet. So what I said was I'll put out a survey. So if you look in the description of this video, there should be a survey. And if I get, I'm going to say 50 to 100 people anywhere in that range, then I will consider starting up a Discord server in the very new near future. If not, I'm going to wait till I get a thousand and then rerun another survey and we'll see how you guys are feeling about that afterwards. But this survey is just going to ask for like your YouTube username, just that I know there's no duplicates and then a couple other things, just like how regularly are you on Discord and stuff like that. So it should take like two minutes. Fill it out if you got a chance. That'd be really cool. And once again, thank you for just subscribing. I'm very happy. And... <laughs> Uh, very grateful for you guys. So thanks. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.